memories from my dad for spending 35 years in a teaching career at Cleveland Hill Schools, which was more than just a job for my dad. He loved this place and still does. Once again, my name is John Moran. I'm the youngest son of uh, uh, Albert Moran. And uh, for those of you who were here in the 1950s, 1960s, 70s, 80s, you'll remember my dad as Mr. Moran or Al, or to the many athletes in the 1950s and 60s simply as coach. My dad began his career at Cleveland Hill Schools in 1950. He was a social studies teacher, department cheerleader, wrestling coach, varsity football coach. He led Cleveland Hill's football team to its first three championships in Division I. In 1969, he was appointed administrative assistant and junior high principal under the district leadership of Mr. Jack Duran. In 1977, he was appointed the middle school elementary principal until his retirement in 1984. Today, my dad is close to 88 years old, relatively good health, and lives in, uh, with his wife in Winter Springs, Florida, wow. his wife Nancy. My dad regrets that he is unable to accept your invitation to attend the 60th anniversary of that awful morning, but he still remembers the attempt of so many dedicated and brave people who risked their lives to save the sixth grade class of Mr. Tommy Griffin and music class students of Mrs. Melba Siebold. He still remarks on the teachers, the administrators, and staff meeting the challenge to clear the building in an orderly fashion that day. This is my dad's story. It was approximately 11.32 a.m. on March 31, 1954. I was in a high school cafeteria in a small room looking over the middle parking lot about to sit down for lunch with co-workers Chuck Costelli, a history teacher, and Frank Bowder, chairman of the math department. When all of a sudden I saw the middle doors to the tunnel, the J-Wing, explode outward with fire. We immediately ran to the doors of the elementary school tunnel, thinking we could make it through to the fire. However, we quickly realized we couldn't. Chuck and I then ran to the near to the art rooms by the cafeteria, but the area was quickly filled with smoke. Chuck and I then decided to run across the front of the elementary school, down the side alley to the burning annex. When we approached the annex, we saw a district principal, Mr. Walter Hefley, there yelling. Betsy's in there, Betsy's in there, and all the other children that he was scared and worried about. And Betsy, of course, is Mr. Hefley's niece. Betsy's mom was mentioned earlier, Mrs. Mary Lees, a second grade teacher who fulfilled her duties to protect her own students that day, knowing her own daughter was in that annex. At that point, Chuck and I opened the end doors to the annex and decided to enter the building, crawling on our bellies below the smoke to get to the music room. We went about a quarter of the way in there, but the heat and smoke overwhelmed us, and we had to crawl out. Back outside of the annex, we met up with Mr. Ed Antos, industrial arts teacher, and Frank Bowder again. We all quickly decided at that point to enter the annex on the other side through a window. Chuck, Ed, and Frank took my dad, and they raised him up to open a window and tried to put him through there. But all of them decided, fortunately, not to go in the window because the entire floor below him was burning. Next, Chuck and I then decided to get on top of the roof of the annex to make a hole using their hands. And to this day, my dad still does not know how they got up there. Unable to make a hole with flames spreading, we got down somehow. By then, the brave members of the Cleveland Hill Fire Department were there in force. When we got to the other side of the annex, we saw Mrs. Siebold outside in the snow, being assisted by the firemen. She was wearing a Harris Tweed outfit. I remember it. It was burning smoke all up her back. She thought she had all the children out of the building before she crawled out through the window that day with your mom. Then, I remember the next door neighbor by the alleyway of the elementary school allowed us to use the garage put the victims and seriously burned children there until they would be moved quickly to the hospital. People did their best to shelter the children from the news media, which was building outside the front of the school at that point. Children from the elementary school were moved quickly and orderly to this room. 
Chuck and I were sent to the hospital for smoke inhalation. We were eventually released later that night. I was constantly bothered by the press for a statement, but I always referred them to the school administration and to the Board of Education members. The impact of this fire changed fire regulations throughout our state and our nation. And I must say, this fire also changed our community. We did our best to move on, we stuck together, we helped each other, but we could never forget. On behalf of my dad, I would like to thank you for allowing me to share these memories of that dark day. May God bless the children of Mr. Griffin's class of 1953-54, their families, classmates, friends, community members, forever affected by this tragedy. May the Cleveland Hill Eagle continue to soar high and watch over this wonderful school and extremely caring community. Thank you.